Hello again, everybody. I'm Larry Hamilton. Uh, thank you for watching. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Uh, we're going to have some fun today, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, I've set up myself with a couple of uh, tough paintings here, probably, and you'll get to see me struggle a little bit with painting a white snow scene on white uh, paper and watercolor. And uh, second painting I want to do is a uh, very uh, dramatic scene of a couple of gray wolves just sort of looking looking out over a, a snow expanse. And uh, so we're going to have a little bit of a challenge to try to uh, do these two paintings today. And uh, hopefully we'll all learn something. I'm sure I will. Uh, hope you do. Um, so uh, these are both winter scenes. Uh, and uh, kind of in keeping with my theme from last uh, week, I did an oil painting in, in uh, winter scene. So uh, we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to do the uh, white on white thing. We're going to do uh, a limited palette as well and uh, in addition I got some new brushes I'm going to try out for the first time for you so uh, uh, if I can't mess that up that'll be an Amer a miracle so uh, I'm going to try to see what we can do and uh, I want to go over to my computer now and uh, show you what I did with these photographs I'll show you all photographs from both paintings um, so I don't have to run back over there in the middle of the time of the painting session and uh, we'll just do two paintings back to back here and uh, hopefully uh, they'll come out looking like something so I'll be right back Okay, here I am at my uh, computer, and uh, I want to uh, take you through the uh, few of the photographs that I have, uh, basically show you how I have created the, uh, uh, the, the cropped images of these two photographs and my value sketch and my actual sketch. So uh, let me show you the original photo of the first painting here, which is uh, <clears throat> uh, just a winter scene. Uh, it's got a lot of houses in the background and even some mountains behind that. Usually I like to uh, bring in uh, mountains to get some depth in uh, uh, my paintings, but uh, this time I wanted to uh, try to see what I could do in a sort of a zoomed in version. So here's a cropped version of that photograph. Um, this photograph came from Johannes Floathouse, uh, one of many that I purchased from him uh, with full rights to reproduce them and no copyright infringement. Um, he runs a website called ImproveMyPaintings.com. Um, if you want to see a master paint oils, paint watercolors, or paint acrylics, um, I would recommend Johannes. He is uh, quite a master. He has several DVDs out. He has regular monthly classes online, and uh, he uses paintings like this, and he does things similar to what I'm doing. He'll crop them down. He'll take a couple paintings sometimes, a couple of photos rather, and put them together and uh, make a new entirely uh, image out of it. So here's the grid over this painting, my 4x5 grid. We're painting on 11 by 14 paper again, uh, sort of my standard. And it uh, fits nicely on a this 4x5 grid. You can lay it over a photograph and uh, pick that up uh, very easily. Um, as you know, I do a, a uh, value map. So this is my value map. So my challenge is to try to uh, protect that white paper and preserve it as snow and yet still give a nice scene with this water going back in the distance with rocks intermittently uh, in, in the in this stream and uh, just try to make it a cool winter's day. So uh, I have also then the sketch. Uh, this sketch will be posted on my website when I put the final video up. It's not there yet. Uh, but uh, I re-edit these videos and I put that up there um, after, um, after I'm finished. Um, okay, that's the first painting. Uh, let me go through quickly the second painting we're going to try. And uh, let me see if I can get this uh, display to work. There we go. Um, this is quite an interesting scene. Uh, this photograph came from a new website I found called pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y, pixabay.com. And they have a lot of photographs out there, and they let, let you uh, use those uh, copyright-free as well. And so I found this one that uh, was posted by somebody named, who uses the name Com Freak. I don't know why that name, but uh, anyway, uh, this was posted by them. But I also didn't want to put all this uh, uh, trees in the background. I mean, it's a nice foggy scene, but I really wanted to sort of zoom in on the fox, on these wolves. So uh, basically, I have a much tighter cropped uh, scene here with these wolves. And uh, I'm going to uh, try to see if I can paint these gray wolves on white paper with some 
uh, fogginess behind them and around them. Uh, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I don't do a lot of animal uh, paintings, as you probably know, uh, but I thought this was a good time to try it. Uh, it'll be my second painting of the day, so uh, hopefully it will uh, come out. Here's the grid uh, of the painting, 4x5 again. I'll be painting it on 11x14 uh, as well. And uh, I also, as normal, did a value map. Um, so here's the value map of it. Um, I may put a little more dark in there than I show on the value map. I want to make sure I outline the back of these, uh, these animals so that they do stand out. They have a little bit of a highlight on them, and I want to make sure that uh, they stand out. So I may change that value map just slightly. And then finally I have the sketch. Again, this sketch will be on the website uh, when I upload the video, so there'll be two sketches and two value maps out there that you can download and uh, and take advantage of. So um, I want to now go back to my easel and uh, we'll get started on this uh, first painting. So uh, let me go back there and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back here and uh, I want to do, take you through my uh, paints and my uh, brushes <clears throat> again and uh, just talk to you a little bit more about this painting that we're going to do first. We're going to do this uh, uh, snow scene here with the with the river in it and uh, let me show you again my palette which I had up here a minute ago. Um, you notice this is looks very similar to my previous palette except there's a few five extra brushes on here. Um, <clears throat> so I should uh, let you know that I, I typically use uh, Sterling Edwards palette, Sterling Edwards brushes. These are his signature brushes. Uh, which are basically uh, these are these are bristle bristle brushes which are rarely used in uh, in uh, watercolor. Several artists use them, but uh, it's not widely used. Has a, uh, so I have a medium and a small here. These are like one and a half inch one inch brushes. I have a one inch nylon brush, a half inch nylon brush. I have uh, three rounds here: number twelve, number eight, and number four. And I have a script liner. And uh, these brushes are real workhorses. The bristles just never wear out. I've had these for two, maybe three years now, and uh, uh, they just they just keep on going on. But they are they are a little rougher on the surface of the paper. Um, and uh, typically, the rough surface of the paper that I use, this uh, 300 pound, does tend to uh, destroy brushes. Uh, so using Kolinsky sable or very expensive brushes is not something that uh, I do very often. But I do uh, have worked out a, a relationship with a company called Trekel.com. Uh, they're, a, they're a manufacturer of uh, brushes and panels and uh, gift boxes and they even sell paints. But I have a relationship with them that uh, can get you guys 10% off of anything you buy. And uh, I have purchased these quill mop brushes. Uh, these are This is a synthetic squirrel, they're called. Uh, you know my oil painting brushes, if you listen to me there, it's uh, I use a synthetic... Uh, uh, What's it called? I forget the, forget it now. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a synthetic bristle, and uh, I use that for oil painting. These are synthetic squirrels, so these mop brushes they just hold a ton of paint. I'm going to experiment with these today, uh, on particularly on the second painting. I may use them a little bit on this first painting, but uh, anyway, there's a that's like a complete set right there uh, that uh, you can get from Trekel. And there will be a code in this video at the bottom that will get you 10% off of anything you buy from Trekel.com. So uh, that's my main advertisement for today. Uh, let's go back here now and uh, get ready to paint. Um, let me zoom in. I want to set up my canvas or my painting here for you. I'll uh, do my audio video uh, stuff and make sure I've got this thing zoomed in properly and got my palette on the uh, lower right corner um, so you can see the palette you can see my uh, sketch it's a little bit light I probably even want it lighter in some areas because I don't this since there's a lot of white in this painting I don't want to have a lot of this pencil line or these graphite uh, uh, transfer <coughs> coming across so um, I usually take a kneaded eraser like this and sort of lightly go over it <coughs> So I can still see the, uh, the sketch, but you may not be able to see it because uh, it gets so light here. Um, again, as usual, if you have any questions, uh, Gene Genevieve from France, south of France. Welcome, Louise. I see you're here. Uh, welcome. You're from South Africa, as I recall. Um, <clears throat> thanks for tuning in. 
And if you have any questions, uh, the chat window, I have a computer up here at my left elbow and I can watch um, what you're talking about. And if you have a question, I'll try to answer it. And uh, we'll get going on this. So I'm going to start out by wetting part of my paper here. I'm not going to wet the whole thing. Many times I do that, but I'm going to try to do a little more control on this and try to protect the white paper as much as possible since the white is going to be my snow. Uh, so I want to come down here. I have an area here that's got some snow below it, so I'm going to try to just wet where I want it, the, the background to be. Um, kind of a rough edge there. Um, over here I've got to have some more uh, areas. There's a little snow back there, and the rest of this is all dark back here. Um, so I'm just going to wet this down so that I have a nice soft blending of uh, of whatever I put in here. And this is really my dark, some of my darkest darks are up here in this uh, part of the, the uh, painting. Um, I'm using a one inch nylon brush, Sterling Edwards brush. Uh, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of that here. All right, um, this background, I said we're gonna use a limited palette. I'm gonna try to stick with my uh, neutral tint, which is this uh, gray color here. Um, you can also use Payne's gray if you don't have uh, neutral tint. I just realized I didn't go around the palette and give you the color colors that are here. Uh, let me stop and do that very quickly right now. Uh, neutral tint is here. These are my Mary Blue uh, watercolors, transparent, beautiful watercolors. Uh, a cyan blue, ultramarine blue, ultramarine violet, crimson lake, primary red magenta, cadmium red, burnt sienna. Uh, this is new. Uh, raw sienna and yellow ochre. I have cupric green, sap green, I have limon yellow, and I have uh, primary yellow, which is sort of a cad yellow, very similar. Uh, my browns, I have a burnt umber, and I have a beautiful still to grain brown here that I use for watercolor. And I have a, an orange, sort of a reddish orange called Auvignon orange. I also have uh, a little bit of black here, lamp black, and I have titanium white, both of which will be usable <coughs> excuse me, in watercolor paintings, um, but I uh, don't use those hardly very often at all. All right, I think we're ready now. I'll go back to what I was talking about here with my uh, neutral tint. I'm going to use neutral tint. I'm going to use uh, my blue, my uh, <coughs> ultra blue, and I'm going to use at least one brown, maybe two browns, depending on what I want to get. If I mix a brown with this blue, if I take my uh, burnt sienna here, which is a bright reddish, sort of a reddish brown, if I take this burnt sienna and mix it with my uh, ultra blue, I start getting a gray. And I can get a gray that's to the brown side, reddish brown side, or I can get a gray that's to the bluish side. Depending on how much blue I put in that uh, will determine how warm it is or how cool it is. Um, the other brown I'll probably be using today is my burnt umber over here. Um, it's good for making trees. It's got a lot darker uh, tone to it. So I'm going to see, one of my challenges today is to see if I can stick to these one, two, three, four colors. Um, I might throw a little purple in there somewhere, but I really don't have to do that. I shouldn't have to do that um, to get a sort of a violet color. Um, but so what I've got this wet up here, I'm going to put in now some background that's sort of a grayish, grayish blue. Um, I'm using more of my blue than brown. Uh, I'm just putting in a, I want this to be cool. I want it to be um, wintry looking. So the whole sky area. Uh, is going to be this uh, sort of gray, grayed down color. Uh, so I can get a gray with my blue and and uh, my browns, whether I want uh, burnt sienna or whatever, uh, but I can also get it with my neutral tint. So i come down here and make sure I paint down above the top of this snow here, um, just filling it in. Uh, this is more blue on this side than it is on the other side, and uh, that's okay. Pick that up 
these brushes will pick up water nicely. Uh, let me see here. This is snow here. Um, there's snow over there. Okay, so I just want to try to leave that white alone if I can. And uh, have a little bit of snow here. This comes down to oh, soften that edge. Um, you can always soften edges in watercolor by uh, just wetting it if it's not wet and lifting up get a nice soft edge in there. Um, that is about all I want to do for the uh, for the sky. Um, I might put just a touch in here because there is some more snow back there, but I want to pull it across there. Make sure that's kind of connected so we don't have total uh, nothingness at the top. I don't want to see a big break there. This is all part of the sky. Okay. Hello, Dr. Is it DVGV? Hello. Welcome. All right. Um, that's about it for that. I see an area here that's forming a hard edge. I'm going to soften it up just a little, put a little water in there, give us some soft areas. Um, another artist that I've taken several workshops off of, watercolor artist, his name is Tony Couch. Um, he... Uh, He's a very good artist. Um, he's getting fairly old right now, um, and uh, he's still giving workshops. Um, but uh, I'm afraid he's going to stop any time and uh, won't be able to see his workshops anymore. But I did go back and watch some of his videos. I have all of his videos, and uh, he talks about snow. He talks about any object you're painting. What is its dominant texture? Is it hard? Is it rough? Is it soft? Um, and uh, he talks about snow being having a rough texture or a soft texture. So I'm going to try to remember that as I paint this painting and uh, see if I can make sure I get some rough, rough, rough texture and soft texture. And uh, so I may have to come back and uh, put in some uh, some changes and. Uh, to get the kind of texture I want. But here I'm going to just put in some trees in the background. This is sort of a, a lot of, a lot of, um, it's a woods basically back here. Um, so I'm going to leave room for a little tree right there. I want to put in a, a pine, or not a pine tree, but a, uh, a evergreen tree there. Um, I'm covering up most of this, but I still got some there that's uh, showing through. Um, on the other side over here has a similar situation, um, and it's even more, uh, got a lot more stuff going on. I'm going to just swoop in some this brown over here and uh, maybe change the color a little bit, uh, darken it up in some areas. Um, Make it go off into the sky. I got some trees here I'm going to put in darker. And uh, something like that. You see here down this way I've got some more trees coming in. Let's just put it up like that there. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave a little more sky in this than is in the original photo. And uh, so there, that's this one, uh, that's the sky, that's the first pass of the background. I'm going to come back and put a few more things in that background, but right now I'm going to leave it at that. Um, this area here, this is, there's some snow in here. I see some more trees that I could put in there. I didn't put in <clears throat> some of those trees right in here. That's going to be snow up above it there. I'm just going to sort of stipple in some trees here and um, even make it come across this way. Change the color. Don't want to go too long, too far with the same color. I uh, want to change things up. The uh, creek st starts back here and comes forward. There's the snow back here. All right. 
let's leave those interesting little shapes there. Um, okay, I'm going to let that kind of dry off now and see if I can start down here with, uh, as long as I don't get lost, I'm going to have to keep an eye on this photograph so I don't get lost between all these rocks. And uh, rocks being covered with uh, snow. Um, I want some really dark, this is really probably not dark enough, even what I have up here already, uh, it could be darker. I may come back and put a little bit of a something in there. I'm going to put some um, bank, some, some of the bank here, which is really dark under this. Along here, there's some rocks that I'm going to put under here that's going to have some snow on top of them. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of rocks in here that have dark, sort of a dark face, if you will. I've got some snow on top of them. Uh, along here, on this side over here, there's uh, some rocks that sort of stick out. I want more uh, neutral tint. I want more of that darker color. The blue and the neutral tint really give us a, a dark, dark color here. Still using this big brush. I haven't even decided to change brushes yet. Um, okay. Um, well, this is going, I think I'm going to put in some more dark in here, like maybe right in here. Um, just darken it up a little bit in some of these areas. Pull that right off the top like that and let it bleed. It's going to bleed over this way. That's fine. Okay. All right, um, so here we have some more trees in the background. Uh, I'm going to pick up my half inch brush and while I got that background going back here, I'm going to see if I can flip in some, uh, some trees and some other uh, things back here that are just sort of hanging out back here. Um, they're high up, they're not really easy to see, but they're back there. I want to sort of fill in that snow area with this, like that. Uh, these things have to sort of have uh, a little bit of, um, I don't know, light twigs and things like that sticking up right in here. Something like this, put in a darker bottom on the thing and uh, pull them together. So I'm trying to make some interesting abstract shapes back here so that you see there's uh, something going on back here. Uh, trees and uh, that sort of thing. Trunks, so forth, back here. Just to, uh, so I don't have this big area. You see how much of that area is just nondescript. I can go back and get some more of my basic colors here. My blue and my Neutral tint um, over here. Throw in a few darks. I got this one tree. I want to put in uh, this evergreen, like right in here. Put in a few things like this. Let it sort of fill in this area here. It's a couple evergreens out there, back there. Put a more dark in there. So something like this with some trunks going up the middle back there. Similar uh, trees on this side. I'm going to put in a uh, dark trunk in the middle going way up like that. And I'm going to come back and fill in some, could be using green, I could be using one of my greens, but I, uh, um, I'm not. I'm going to use, try to stick to this simple palette and uh, see if I can make it work. One more trunks in here. I was trying to see what you said, Heather, the soft and rough texture of the snow 
It's referring to the difference between newly fallen snow and snow that's been distributed or walked on or partially melted. I, actually, the snow, when it's... Uh, anyway, however, however the snow is made, whatever, it, whatever has caused it, whether it's from newly fallen snow or if it's been stepped on or walked on or whatever, or mashed down, um, the best way to get it look like snow is to give it some soft texture um, and sort of pull up. So I'm just kind of adding things back here in the background that make make these trees look like that. I've got a big uh, flat area here that's it's almost looks man-made almost, um, and I'm not going to leave that. I'm going to come back and put in uh, soften some of that. But here I want to just give you guys some trees that are kind of sticking up there. Um, maybe put a couple more over here. This is not like the photograph at all. I'm ad-libbing now um, with this. Uh, I want to get some dark things in here. Uh, this is a good... I see how soft this is. It's still wet. Um, good case for me to use my... Come on, my uh, razor blade in here. And because it's wet, I can come in here and scrape out some tree trunks and they turn white. Uh, the reason for that is because that paint is not dry, it's still wet in there. So I can come in here and put in a few things that make it look like we got trees going all the way up here and I didn't have to paint them. Actually by scraping out the paint you make them like white uh, trunks. Neat trick, learned that from Tony Couch. I'm sure a lot of other painters use that too, but uh, he's the one that taught me. <clears throat> you see, I'm going to put in a few more trees in this area. I'm going to start using this sort of dry brush here. You've seen me do this before where I just sort of use this, the back of the brush and just put in some interesting shapes over here um, and let them... Uh, leave some abstract shapes in there, change the, the value. I don't have that much, many values to work with or many colors to work with here. I got blue, neutral tint, and a couple of browns. So this is all going to be a uh, pretty much um, not monotone, but certainly going to have uh, minimal um, color change in it. But I can go for a warm painting or a cool painting and depending on how much of the darks or how much of the uh, browns I put in will sort of determine how cool or uh, warm this painting is. I've got areas over here that need some more attention uh, so let's just put them in. This is dry over here so I'm not having any problem doing this. Um, so I'm just going to lay in some very nice things here. I'm doing negative painting now I'm going to put a tree right here. And you're seeing me paint the tree because it's, I'm leaving it unpainted underneath. Okay, so something like that. Put in a few other things over there. I don't want to I want to make it so interesting that your eye goes over there because um, I really want you to look back in here. I'm trying to force your eye to follow this stream and go right back to the back here. So that's about enough. I have an area of the background here that needs a little more attention. So let me finish that up very quickly and we'll be out of the background here. Again, this doesn't look like the photograph. If you, When I re-edit this video, I'll have the photograph just laying right beside and you'll be able to see uh, what I've done differently than the photograph um, and uh, you'll be able to see that's uh, interesting change and uh, so let's just put in a few things here flick in a few some rough texture down here now I want to talk about the texture again this is this is pretty well uh, hardened right here it's it's uh, it's dry very dry so I'm going to come in here and just sort of wet it with clear water with my Sterling Edwards 
brush that's got really tough bristles and just sort of come in here and push and pull up. And all of a sudden I changed that edge. I didn't quite change it enough because it's really dried on the paper, but I changed that edge from uh, hard to soft. And you start seeing that change go across here in the, uh, in the painting. And so I'm getting some nice th stuff that looks like snow back there, actually. Um, and here, uh, paint around the snow on this one. Uh, there's, okay. Putting some rough, rough texture here. This is rough texture, what says snow, rough or soft. So I'm just letting this brush sort of skim over this area where there's snow back there. I'm going to leave it rough. Uh, I can soften it a little bit if I, as it touches this area down here, if I want to have some uh, change. I actually can make this look like shadows here, um, but I can also make it look like it's sort of hanging over, hanging over those rocks in the distance. Um, all right, let me see here. What are we doing? We're uh, moving right along here. A lot to do today. Um, over here, um, this is coming down. Let me see. I want to try to be as accurate, as close as I can to this. Put in some uh, things that look like there's some shadows and kind of defining uh, what's going on here. And because that is snow, I'm going to soften it now and sort of just let it run together. And uh, I've got a nice little shadow there. I'm actually running over my creek back here, but uh, I'll come back and put that in. Uh, there's a lot of snow in here. I'm going to soften that up. Uh, all of this water, clear water. Um, this is a whole bank of snow that's got uh, more um, bushes and trees. I'm going to just put a little underpainting here and let that set and dry off and then I'm going to come back and put some bushes on top of it. Okay. So, I don't know how many of you get to see snow. I see Heather talking about not get to see much snow in Mississippi. Um, now that I'm in Florida, I don't get to see any snow. If I paint a a winter scene from Florida and a winter scene from a summer scene from Florida. They both look about the like. Um, have really no no uh, significant change here in Florida, um, but it's nice to go out. The weather's nice and uh, never have super cold, chilly temperatures like we do up north. All right, back here. I'm going to start with this creek and try to put this in back here. Um, put in a start bringing it forward. I'm making it dark um, because basically in the winter time much of the uh, creeks, many of the creeks for some reason they, they show um, dark, like black almost. Um, so I'm just putting in some some of this creek that's sort of a darky blue, blue sort of blue color. Um, comes in here, we've got some snow there, we've got some snow on top of this, this little rock right here. I'll paint around that. So I'm, I'm defining them. that rock. I just put a little dark base on it, um, but um, I'm not having to paint the rest of that rock because I'm outlining that rock. Over here, let's see. I'm going to put a little brown in that. We're getting a little reflection of the uh, bank in here that's part of the this uh, stream. Um, as long as I keep that soft and uh, I can fool your eye, help you think that's... I'm using a lot of clear water here to uh, just move this paint around and keep it light and I'm just painting around these things that uh, 
changing the uh, value a little bit, making it uh, lighter in some areas and darker in some areas. Over here. So this is wet on dry. I'm not uh, putting any, if I want it soft, I basically go back and soften it with clear water. Like right in here, I can come back and just put in clear water. And this is probably a good place for me to try to use my uh, quill mop brush because they hold so much water um, that uh, be a nice uh, attempt to, to use that. Matter of fact, I think I'll just do that. I'm going to get this uh, Trekel Quill Mop 8000 uh, out and I'm going to see how much water that thing holds. I know it, it uh, I did a little experimentation with it earlier to uh, see how I could use it on the uh, the next painting. Uh, but <clears throat> it holds so much water that uh, it really covers a lot of paper very quickly. This water is going right off the paper over here. Got rough texture, soft texture. Got a little rough edge right there. It started setting in on me. Okay, does that look like water? Does that look like a stream coming toward you? I hope so. That's my goal. Um, this thing just holds a ton of water. Um, a way lot more water than my uh, other brushes do. So come over here and put in a little bit of a, a rock right there. I want to paint around. The bristles are not as disciplined as the ones I use from uh, Sterling Edwards. They just sort of bend and flop over on you like that. Um, but that's the nature of a squirrel hair brush, I guess. Um, I've never used a squirrel hair brush before, so you're getting to see me try this for the first time here, live. All right. So I've got some more rocks I can outline and underline there. Um, I come across, let's just blend that together. I don't want hard edges in there. Soft edges. Okay, so I've got a big mound of snow over here that I'm going to come and finish off. I've got another mound of snow right here that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put just a very light wash, kind of like I did up here, mostly clear water. Let me get some clear water first. Um, and leave some some tone there, not much, just a very little bit um, in some areas. Even add a few browns in there just to uh, give me something to paint over. And it will, uh, this brush acts differently than the last one because I uh, the br bristles all sort of bend, and that, that uh, Sterling Edwards brush, those bristles don't hardly bend at all. Okay, so now I can see those two mounds of snow. Over here I've got a mixture of rocks and snow and bushes and all kind of stuff going on over here. Um, let me see if I can put something in back here that sort of ties this together a little bit. It's not really the water, it's not the creek. I'm just going to put in a bit of a underpainting here. I'm going to come back and darken that all down. There is some snow that rides in this area right here, so I'm going to see if I can make that look right. Um, this is another whole area of snow down here. Um, rough, rough texture. The rough texture really works the same on any brush as long as you get the, a lot of the water out of it. And these brushes hold a lot of water. Move it very fast and you end up with a uh, nice rough texture. You probably can't even see that because it's uh, so hard to see. Um, down here, the same idea. Um, 
just put that, I just want to make sure I keep these separate so I don't end up with uh, the water getting confused with the snow bank. All right, how are we doing here, folks? Renata, I'm looking back here, Raju, see who's joined us. Um, going back here. Okay, I'm going to see how this brush works on this <clears throat> area back here now. I've sort of, <laughs> it really adds a, uh, so I'm trying to darken it. I'm probably going to have to come back and put my um, other uh, bushes and stuff here with the other brush maybe this brush is too almost too flimsy for that uh, but at least it's defining that area a little bit back here I'll put in a few more things like that leaves us little humps of snow there down here I got little tufts of similar type things down here that uh, I can throw in this brush is uh, a lot different than the uh, those synthetic uh, bristle brushes that I had from Sterling Edwards. Mm, what did I do with that round brush? There it is. Um, try this for a minute and see what uh, what happens with it. I'm going to put a little more brown in this brush. Um, this brush has a lot better. Uh, well, you you just notice when I paint with it, it doesn't doesn't give and bend, it just sort of holds its shape very well and uh, it lets me put in some very cool things like this. Trying to get that so that it looks like there's snow around and we've got these little tufts of stuff coming up out of it like that. All right. Um, Back here, we got some more rocks and things back there in the background. Let me see if I'm using a round brush. I don't think I told you I went to the number eight round Sterling Edwards brush here. Um, got areas here that have some rocks in them. I'm going to put just a little bit of a base under this over here so that it looks like we're seeing uh, a bank, even though that's not in the photograph. I need that to sort of separate when I'm painting in watercolors. I need to need that to sort of separate the bank from the water. Otherwise, you're going to think that's you're not going to know exactly what that is over there. It's going to run all run together, and you're not going to know that the stream is running here all the way back in this area back here. Um, so I'll just soften it up a little bit, add some. some things like this a little bit of uh, value change a little bit of rough texture okay over here I'm gonna put in some darker paint and pull it out into the water just a little so I'm just helping sort of trying to uh, define a little bit more of this out here um, get my dark brown, dark, uh, in this area here, I've got, I've already got the underneath part of that. Let me put in this underneath part of these rocks, really get dark. Um, over here I've got a dark area that I want to highlight right there. And one right here that's got a lot of snow on top of it, so I'm going to make it look rough and make it look like it joins the water a little bit and then come back with my tip of my brush and sort of soften the top of it give me a soft edge back here like that a little bit of soft edge in here and this one um, even want to pull down just a little bit of that into the water so that it looks like there's a bit of a shadow here same thing on this one um, don't forget these back here, same deal. Um, all right, I'm just sort of, again, not looking at the photograph all that much, but I am trying to uh, 
identify for you rocks with snow on top of them. And this little pointed round brush really helps do that. Um, see, I'm going to change the color a little bit on this brown, get a little bit redder coming forward right in here. Um, like this along here. So I hope you're seeing the uh, effect of very, very dark against almost white in what well, it makes you think of snow in an area back here. Yep, my brush. Um, so the if I leave this soft stuff in there, it really helps break up the uh, hard hard edges, and it also makes it look more believable. It looks more like snow on top. Okay, over here I got a whole bunch of stuff, mixtures of snow and rock. Again, I don't have too many <clears throat> colors to pick from. I've just got my uh, three, four colors here. Let's see, in this area, I pulled down some things that look like backs of rocks here or something underneath this rock here. Over here, I've got some really dark things coming in. Down here, like this. In this area, I've got a funky little dark shape. If I don't have a funky little dark shape, I'm going to try to make one uh, because I want to make it interesting. I want to have some entertainment value in here. Um, and that soft edge, if you notice, it helps bury that rock, the base of that rock. Uh, it helps bury it in the snow. It's kind of like we do when we're putting trees on the ground. We have to connect them to the ground, so uh, soft edges will help do that. Okay, cool. It's coming out a little better than I thought it might. Um, a lot of stuff going on over here. So let's put in some soft stuff, some hard edges. Um, this, I already put in some of that snow with a rough edge over there. And uh, I'll leave that, I think, as it is. I'll come back maybe and put a few more. So when it dries, I'm going to put a few more things on top of it. But right now, let's just leave it like this. All right, uh, this area here looks a little goofy. So let's go back and see what we can do to fix that up. Um, that's where I did have some other rocks in there like this. I'm going to outline this rock so you see it better. And I'm going to outline a few more things back here so that it looks like I'm going to put some soft edge here, pull it up. Um, outlining this rock so you can tell that. All right, looks like a couple of rocks sitting there with snow on top of them. I didn't paint the snow. I haven't painted any snow at all, folks. I'm just painting around the snow and letting your eye tell you what's there. Okay, good. Well, we're half done and we've used 48 minutes. Well, we may run over today, folks. I hope you don't mind staying with me here. Um, these are taking longer. I've got a lot of detail in here. It gets down here is going to be fast, but I want to make sure I hit this detail here. I want to hit these rocks with. Um, I want to make sure I get them looking like rocks with snow on top, and uh, we'll come back and put a few more things in there. This is a another big rock down here that's got a whole bunch of stuff on it. This rock sitting out here is just totally got nothing going on there. All right. Um, what do we do? We got all hard edge. So what do we do? We soften it up. 
pull up some areas here that just make it sort of connect together, connect it to the to what's there. The uh, water really helps sell that. And here I've got snow on the bottom. Um, Soften this edge here, pull it down. You always pick the paint up by laying the brush on top of it like this and lifting up. Um, now that area above here is looking like it needs to be a little darker because I can't see the top of the snow very well. So I'm going to come back with my brush here and put in a little bit darker water back here. Um, it could have some shadow that's making it look darker. But I'm going to soften it and pull it down to the top of this snow here. So you can see now the snow that's on top of these rocks. Couldn't quite see that before. It was almost the same value. So let's throw that in. See if we can make it look a little icy maybe. Put more blue in it. Um, down here, this area, same problem I got here with snow. Top of this rock here. All right, so this is mostly negative painting, folks. A lot of negative painting. Probably the exercise in negative painting that uh, more so than anything else. I've got this is dark, darker over here. This is all water, so I'm going to continue. Where's my big mop? Just mop. I'll fill this thing in. This is going to cover a lot in here. That's going to be darker. Um, if I move fast with this, I should be able to get this rough texture here like this. Some is soft, some is hard, some is rough. Something like that. Get down here and This brush holds so much stuff. Big rock right there. Okay. Let that dry for a while. Um, kind of hard edge forming there. I want to kind of fix that. All right. Let's uh, blend that together, let it soften up, let it... All right, um, really hard edge right here. Um, not sure you can see that that well. Um, right in here I'm talking about. <clears throat> so let's see if we can kind of fix that up a little bit so we don't have quite as much hard edge. Need more clear water, actually. Get my bristle brush and just sort of put in a few more streaks like that. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I think it's looking pretty decent from what I can see on the monitor here behind me. Um, let's check my uh, Maria Roberts has to make pies for tomorrow. Oh boy. Well, it'll be, uh, I'll have this uh, on uh, online, it'll take me a couple, three days. It'll probably take me a little longer to edit this one because I've got a family obligations tomorrow as well. Um, but uh, we'll, uh, I didn't want to not paint today because I advertise it that I, I do this. So for all the people in the U.S., this is uh, leading into a holiday here. All right, um, who else? Ian Clark.
Okay. How, question is, can you tell me how much importance you put on the quality and cost of paints in order to recreate the colors you hope to achieve? Well, um, there's a lot of variation in, in uh, paints and the colors. Um, I spend quite a bit of money on these My Mary Blue uh, paints. They're not cheap, as some folks can attest to who have been following me and been buying these paints. Um, I think the quality of the paint and the quality of the paper are probably the most important things you can spend money on. Brushes, uh, I mean brushes are important. You just see the difference in what I've just experienced here with this quill mop, how it holds water and the kind of textures you get from it. Uh, and uh, But I really like these Sterling Edwards brushes as well because they they, they, they don't hold as much paint, but boy, they last forever. They're made of a synthetic uh, bristle that uh, lasts for a long, long time. I've had these forever. And uh, so you kind of, every, you know, every artist has to kind of make that decision. You can't, I can't tell you to, you have to buy this or that to be successful. You kind of have to work that out yourself based on your, how much money you have available and whether it's a, something you're going to do for, uh, a hobby or something you're going to do for it to try to make income off of, but certainly the uh, the, the paints you use and the the, uh, the quality of them will show up in your artwork somewhere somehow. Um, and uh, if you put paintings in shows and things like that, um, you will you will. Uh, you will compare yourself to other artists who are using maybe higher quality. Uh, and uh, it really depends on what your objectives are. I mean, if you're just doing painting for fun and you want to just try to learn something new, uh, you don't need to spend a ton of money. Windsor Newton has a couple of student grades of paints that are, uh, that are pretty good. Uh, I know one artist that's on YouTube uh, uses only Cotman uh, student grade watercolors um, and uh, they're very cheap very plentiful um, they're nice to uh, they, they, they give good good paintings he gets very good paintings has a ton of subscribers um, <clears throat> but uh, that's you know his his uh, way I, I take these paintings that I paint for you here and uh, I enter them in competitions I enter them in, in shows um, I don't come back and redo them. I, I maybe will add a few things uh, at the end after I'm finished just to uh, kind of maybe um, fix up some things that I didn't like when I did the painting. But I've, I've had a number of paintings that I've done here on the line, live experimentation with things, and uh, I put them in shows uh, because I know the the paint quality is good. I know the paper quality is very good. Uh, I use this Fabriano Artistico uh, paper, and uh, it's uh, very good paper. And I like how it, the 300 pound is a lot more expensive than the 140 pound, as you can imagine. Uh, but um, since I, I do that, I'll put them in, uh, put these in shows and, and uh, so, I don't know, it's uh, kind of your own, uh, <laughs> you kind of have to work that out yourself, Ian. I, I can't say you have to do this, but uh, I think the, uh, a lot of it is uh, your own individual circumstances and whether or not you feel like you can put more money into uh, materials or brushes or whatever. Um, It's kind of why I tell everybody what my brushes are, what brushes I use, what paper I use, what paints I use, because um, I want you to know that there are some very good quality things out there that uh, you can get very nice uh, results with. Um, I'm, I'm just sort of filling in this area here while I'm talking, uh, not thinking too much, probably not doing the best job here. It's hard to do left brain, right brain, but. Uh, I have to do that all the time. Okay, I got snow coming out here. I got another big snow coming out here. Let's see if we can get this thing finished up here fairly quickly, maybe. I've got a rock that sort of surrounds this snow. 
sort of separates the snow from the one above it like this and it sort of takes off and goes up the up the hill here this is going to give you a, an idea that we got a another hill that's coming in um, warm it up a little bit pull it down This is very dark here, very, very dark. I'm not making it dark enough at all. Come back here. Big. Okay. So this rough edge, rough texture here I'm getting is going to help tell the story that there's more snow in here, uh, rough or soft. Remember I said that. So let's put a little soft in here in some areas. Soften that edge, blend it together, pull it back. Um, this other one above it here has got some, put a little bit of a, background on it, um, soften it up, pull it together like that. Um, we got one big dark one out here. Um, let's see, I'm going to put a little more dark on this guy here. He's not quite dark enough. And I probably ought to put a little more soft edge in here somewhere. Okay, something like that. I've got a dark one here, a very dark one. And so I'm just going to put in, hmm, that's very, very dark. These are rounded. Many of these rocks are rounded because they've been pounded and beat on by the water, by the streams coming down. Um, and. Uh, for probably a long time, and uh, so most of the time you make rocks, you make them angular. I'm defining more rocks, folks, back here. A bit of a bank in here that's got some, some ice sticking out over it or snow soften it up soften it up out here soften this up a little bit and put in just a little of the shadow under it maybe I got a edge here that I don't like so let's just pull it out like that um, pull this out over here so it doesn't look like we've stuck that on. Uh, this guy down here is very dark. He's got some more um, shadow type color down here. So that's uh, getting very close. I got just a few more things to do here. I want to put in a some bushes as this is dried off. This is all nice and dried over here, so I'm going to pick up my uh, burnt sienna and uh, see if I can flip in some, some more bushes and trees over here like this. It's a little bit too, uh, too light, but I'm going to come back and put a little dark underneath it, let it run together. And just flick it up. Use the side of this brush to flick up these long things. Got a few more back here, just a touch of them back here. It's almost too dark, but let's flick it up like this. Over here, this is all just kind of icy stuff here. I'm not even going to do much with that, I don't think. Um, Got these little red, reddish 
take the water out of this brush and just flick them up like this. Oh, like that. They saw some of them stick up. All right. Um, there are tufts of grass and stuff here around these these rocks in here. Let's put a few of those things in here like this. Like that. Come back a little more dark at the bottom. Um, I got an idea. Let's try. We haven't tried this big old brush with all these bristles here. Um, when I take a brush like this, it's got a thousand bristles on the end of it, and uh, put some paint in it. And I want to come in here and see if I can run this now. Let's just go like this. Like that. A big reeds and trees and branches and stuff sitting there. I don't want to go back too many times. If I go back too much, it'll all run together. I don't want that to happen. Down here we got little tufts of grass. Okay, um, what else can I do here? I think I've pretty well managed to finish it off. Um, just a little more gray dry brush. I'm going to see if I can hit some dry brush in here over this area. Um, actually, this is not dark enough in here. This has got to be darker. It's got the uh, reflection. It's sort of reflecting what's on the bank back there. Okay. And it comes over here, all the way over here even. See how this rough, this 300 pound paper and this cold press paper, how it uh, reacts when you pass a watercolor brush over it like this. It just sort of pulls off a little bit of it and it leaves the rest. Um, that's what I want to happen. Okay, um, I'm just about going to finish this one up here. Um, so you can give this a try at your leisure and uh, I'm going to darken this corner down here just a little bit more. Keep your eye on the painting a little bit more. Of course, I uh, didn't have it set up so you can see me do that with the live audience here. Okay. All right, I think that's pretty much what I want to do there. Let me look at it one more time and see if there's anything else. Um, maybe just a few little things over here to help break this up a little bit to make sure you got some um, and let's and a few things. This is all hard edge right here. Probably want to soften it up. Like another way is to use this brush here and go in there and scrub it. Uh, these uh, had too much hard edge right there, so I just used some clear water in this uh, bristle brush and just come in and get rid of that hard edge. Okay, kind of does it for me there. Okay, let's see here. I think. I think I'm going to say that's close enough. I could spend some more time on it. I may spend a little more time on some of these areas, but right now I think I'm just going to sign it and say, uh, <clears throat> let's move on to the other painting. The other painting is going to be a, a bit of a challenge too. Um, but so much of this is uh, negative painting that uh, um, it's really what the, I guess that's what the lesson is for today, is how to make white on white things when you got a white uh, subject matter and you got white paper, how do you make them show up? And you see it's a lot of contrast, a lot of variation of uh, the uh, Okay, so 
that's my uh, winter day watercolor for uh, for this month. So uh, now I'm going to clean up my palette slightly and I got to change my dirty water and when I do that I'm going to uh, turn my board over and uh, so if you guys want to take a about a five minute break or so um, while I try to get my dirty water out of here and get some clean water going um, I've got the water already here all I have to do is just sort of transfer my brushes um, get these brushes cleaned out and we'll go on to the next one. The next one I'm going to use probably use my quill mop more in the next painting than I did here. I don't want to spill that dirty water. All right, um, palette's clean. Um, go get a coffee break if you need it, folks. I'll be right back here. Okay, so you didn't have time to go get a cup of coffee, probably. Um, Glad you stayed with me. If you can hold on, we'll do another one here. Uh, yeah, I could, uh, somebody suggested adding some dark grasses with the rigger. I could have pulled that rigger out and done a little more grasses. I may do that um, later um, after we're off off the air and uh, it uh, probably would, would help to do that. But uh, right now I want to get into this next painting because we've been going for an hour and 11 minutes and I want to try to see if we can stick to our two hour requirement if we can, but that's not necessary. Not necessarily we have to do that. Um, you saw in the, uh, before this, before I started, I had this photo up there and this is the uh, photo that I cropped down from a very large photo. So the, these wolves are sort of uh, almost blending into the painting. You can't hardly tell them from the background. Um, which is not unusual for a wolf, I suppose. A wolf would be a very uh, sneaky character and you couldn't see him very well. Um, so uh, I'm gonna try that, see what I can do with it. Um, I did try I try these brushes out on a 140 pound paper. I uh, did a little uh, experimentation just to see how they reacted. So uh, you're not seeing me do this uh, exactly first time without having tried something, but uh, using these new brushes, I had to at least see how they would work a little bit. And I used this big uh, uh, quill mop to uh, do a lot of that. So I'll do some of that and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get it done. Uh, let me get a drink of water here so I don't lose my voice. Okay, folks, if you're refreshed and ready to go for another session I am too okay so this has got a lot of not smoke it's actually fog and uh, so it's got to uh, we got to try to imitate that fog now so <clears throat> this brush one of these two brushes um, see here one of these two brushes I've got um, I'm probably going to use these uh, for um, this painting and uh, so I want to get going here if I can get this there we go all right so let's see here I'm going to use some clear water and again I'm uh, you probably can't even hardly see this uh, you can't see this background here I've got it so white because I, I knew this was going to be light and I didn't want to have uh, a lot of that uh, showing, a lot, of, a lot of the pencil marks showing. Um, so back here, um, again, I'm going to try to stick with these same colors, neutral tint and my blue, my uh, ultramarine blue and one of my browns. I think for this one I'm going to probably stick with my um, burnt umber brown. So I'm going to get out these three palette colors. I'm going to try to stick to just these three. Um, 
these this brushes hold so much water and so much paint um, when I rinse them out it's almost like I'm throwing paint away because there's so much paint that sticks in them um, but we're going to have a lot of gray this is going to be very cool painting cooler than the last one because the last one I put a lot of uh, the brown in there and warmed it up this one we're going to uh, not put a lot of brown in it there'll be some brown around the uh, the wolves backs in those areas but uh, here we're going to just I'm going to take this and wet these areas here where I know these trees are going to go and I'm going to do wet on dry except <clears throat> I'm going to have these areas here uh, already pre-wetted so that when I <clears throat> touch it with paint it's going to um, blend and soften off very much so um, and that's going to leave a little bottom there that I can connect to the next round. You can't even see where I put that paint but I'm going to get me a brush full of this uh, neutral tint with just a smattering of blue in it and we'll see how this works. Thing I found when I was testing this was that the when I pushed up with these bristles like I do with my other brushes a lot of times the bristles would splatter and throw paint up above now this is a little darker than it shows in the paint in the uh, in the photograph but it's going to dry about 20 to 30 percent lighter right remember that so let's just take that into account and uh, see how that works. Um, this sort of gets lighter up here. I'm going to come back and just sort of pick up a little of that. Uh, down here it gets lighter. I'm going to pick up some of that. This brush is good for just picking up uh, paint that's on the paper and just sort of letting it blend. When it's soft like this, you can just sort of blend it and let it uh, fade into nothingness kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, that's going to lighten up, so I'm not too worried about the, how dark it is. Um, over here, I don't know if that's still wet enough, but I'm going to put a little more water over here. Big brush full of water. Keep that bottom soft so I can connect it together without any hard edges. Okay, let's see what we can do on the other side over here now. Over here we got some trees that are going to stick up and they're going to have fog underneath them. Let's change it, make them a little more blue rather than gray. Get a lot of running. So let's just turn that into fog, pick it up. Up here, I've got uh, basically everything just sort of goes right off the paper. Put all that blue over here to sort of add a little bit of harmony. Ah, see, I'm getting a blossom here. Watch that. Got to be careful with that. Um, If I get a blossom, I want to control the edge so that it's not overly, not hard anyway. All right, um, let's pick up some more darks, my blues and blacks over here. This area on the right side is really, really the darkest part of this painting. If you squint when you look at the photo, um, you'll see uh, how dark it really is over here. So I'm going to put another layer on here. 
Just going to run it out, let it get foggy. Stop it from running. By not wetting this paper here, I've left an edge where the, the water will not go below because the paper is dry, um, which is what I want to happen. See how that just sort of stops and starts building up there? Um, so these brushes are coming out pretty nice. Um, I like the way they react. Put a little brown in here. here. So I'm going to put a few more trees in here. These are all soft and see if I can put just a little more brown in some of these. Use my upward stroke here to see if I can make the points on these tops appear. There we go. Put a little blue in there. Hold on there, buddy. Don't get too close to that ear of that fo or that wolf. I'm trying to call these foxes. They're not foxes, they're wolves. Scrub it out. Covered up one of my trees there. Just a series of overlapping brush strokes. Brush strokes. Um, back putting in a little more paint, trying to get it before it dries up too much. Getting a lot of hard edge up here, I want to sort of soften some of that up. So let's just come in there and put a little more fog in there. What do you think? There we go. Okay, I'll let that dry for a second and then come back and put some more trees over that. That's quite an interesting uh, challenge to try to make this uh, work. Um, so far I've only used this number zero quill mop here for this. I'm getting a hard edge forming there, i got to keep an eye out for that. <clears throat> this 
so let's uh, don't go too far away there. Part of the problem is I want to make this soft and and peaceful and sort of dreamy like back here, but I don't want to uh, <clears throat> make it as hard edge as the photograph. The photograph actually has very hard edges in it, um, as photographs are. They they don't they don't make a watercolor uh, blending or anything like that, like we can do with our brushes. Um, so we have to do things like this to make it, uh, we have to make them a little more, a little blurrier, less, less specific. As we come forward, we can uh, make them a little more specific and a little more detailed, but this doesn't have a lot of forward stuff in it. Let me see if I can put some more dark over here. This is really not dark enough. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. I got to keep going back and forth. I let this dry a little bit. I work over here. I'll come back on this side as it starts to dry off and see if I can uh, get in there. Part of the problem is if I had a I was painting this on my own time, I would just kind of stop and let it dry, you know, but when I'm doing this live and we're trying to get something complete accomplished here in a, an hour to an hour and a half, um, I have to paint differently than I might otherwise. Soften this up, put a little more fog in there. I'm just using this brush to scrape across. Um, take parts out. You can actually use your uh, like a paper towel and, and blot areas if you want to pick up paint uh, like that. Uh, use the side of the brush. If you've got a dry brush, fairly dry, uh, you can get the fog. There I had too much water and that one had just started making a blossom immediately. So you kind of put in the tops and then you come back and take out the bottoms. Over here, let's soften that up so we don't have hard edges. We've got a bunch of hard edges right here. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get top of these walls better outlined here. Outline his ears, his head. Okay, you're starting to see the outline of the wolf. All right. I'm sure you see things that I probably should be addressing here that I'm not. I know when I watch other painters, I start going through, oh, you're missing that spot. Oh, go back over and get that spot. Um, so I hope I'm not frustrating you too much. Oh, you're getting a blossom over there. Oh, watch out, it's going to run. Those are all things I, I've told myself when I've watched other painters. Especially when you're painting vertically like this, you always have this threat that you're going to create a big long run of some kind that's going to mess up your painting, but I don't know, it's sort of let's go over here. Okay. hard edge right there and get rid of it. It's that kind of scrubbing I do with this brush that will probably knock these bristles off. That's uh, the thing that I don't have with the uh, Sterling Edwards brushes. They don't, uh, those things you can't knock them off with a, hardly with anything. Uh, 
You just wet this all down down here. Putting just a little bit of the uh, tone back here. And clear water and move it up to the uh, base of the wolf's belly. Over here, let's put a little bit between his tail and his back leg. Over here, same thing. I think I just messed you up watching live. You couldn't see, I was painting under the palette, which happens often. I get so engaged here, I can't uh, lose track of what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to make these wolves just sort of going to melt into the fog. Mm, I see a spot over here. He's at a little low tension. There. Soften it up. I don't want a hard edge running down there. Hope you're getting a little education in edges and edge management and handling hard edges and soft edges and use one brush so far. This is a one brush painting so far. Okay, let's see if we can do some more work in here. A few more trees there. All right, clear water. Let's blend it together here. It's kind of a fun way to paint. We're not having to paint a lot of stuff. We're just kind of making impressionistic marks here that look like pine trees sitting in a fog. Hard part's going to be trying to render those wolves accurately. Little blossoms here I got to watch out for. Okay. Okay, step back, take a look. I haven't stepped back from anything today. I think it's getting there. That's kind of the feeling I'm trying to create. Moody paintings or paintings that have some sort of emotion in them or paintings that tend to grab people's attention. They tend to sell well. They tend to show well in galleries or art shows or competitions. But you got to get emotionally involved with it so that it does bring out these I think this 
area. And I don't want all those trees over there. I'm going to just sort of pull that out, pull it back. The other brush, you know, I know you've seen me use that brush before, that uh, Sterling Edwards brush, this uh, little one inch brush. We take it and get, it, get water in it like this and, and uh, pull it like this and it just sort of makes an interesting set of scrubbing marks basically that sort of change how everything blends together. It sort of takes some of the color out, sort of pulls things together. Um, it's a nice tool for this sort of thing. Um, not too dark right there. All right. Um, all right. Um, and you can use it to paint with. I actually put a little paint in here like this and uh, just come over here in this area where there's not too much going on right now and put in another little layer of trees. Every bristle in this thing becomes a paintbrush. So clear water, clean it out, and then just sort of merge things together like that. It helped that area over there that was kind of uh, open, had a lot, of, not much going on there. Okay. Again, folks, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat window. I'll try to check it. I've been uh, kind of missing that a little bit here. There's a funny looking thing right there. Let's see if we can. All right. I think I'm ready to work on the wolves now. I'm leaving that sky pretty much white because it was all just sort of foggy and I'm not uh, doing much with it. Uh, so what brush am I going to use for the... I think I'm going to get my little number four, number four round from Sterling Edwards uh, and see if we can start putting in this Fox. Let me get some more black out here, or a neutral tint, more blue, and even a little more brown. So I have my three colors on the palette, and uh, I'm going to start working on this, these wolves. And so let's start here with this guy. Place for my Might be just a little bit too thick, but I'm trying to leave a little bit of a highlight there if I can. Um, the ear is sort of white. I'm not talking, folks, because I'm concentrating here. Just put in a little
clear water, pull it down. It's got a little brown in him here, a little bit of gray. I'll leave that little highlight there if I can. Even though these are gray wolves, I'm putting a little more brown in them maybe than I should. water, pull it down, soften it up, make sure that you don't have too much hard edges in there. I'm going to pull this guy right down into the, into the fog. A little brown in there. Down here, let's throw in some fogginess. Okay. Oh, we're getting there. So this is a little bit of a too dark. Let's put him. I want him to be darker than what's behind him. So you can see. We got a little bit of darks coming down. I'm trying to use the brush strokes to make it go the way his body goes. Soft edges, pull it down, and leave a few little highlights in there, not too much. All right. And we got a of a little bit brown back here on this area. So I'm just sort of putting in the color that I need. And then I'm coming back with clear water with this brush and just sort of blending it together and pulling it. So I don't have a lot of hard edges, don't have a lot of hard color in there. This has got a hard edge on me. Let's see, these two legs come down and see, we have a little bit of a thing in there like that. Pull this together. Okay, let's see, there's a little bit of a dark area back here. And in sh shadow, I guess. down and blend it off, soften it off. Um, just a little bit of 
color in here. I want to highlight that more water. Okay, that sort of helped me highlight that uh, his leg. Okay, um, his tail, he's got a little bit of a tail hanging down here that we need to sort of high indicate. <clears throat> like that, it comes down and over here, it gets into that, like that. And then the rest of it's all sort of soft and gets foggy. There we go. Um, and now I see an area where I didn't get enough. In there, I don't like that, so let's fix it. Soft, a lot of water. I want that to sort of merge with this tail and all that to sort of soften into nothingness here. Get my big brush out. Blend it up. Okay. All right, I think that's looking like a wolf or a dog. <laughs> Hope it looks like a wolf. All right, one more wolf to go and we'll be done. Okay, let's go here. So this guy, he's got some... a little bit of highlight, but he's got... we'll leave just a little bit of an opening between him and the one in front of him so you can kind of see... see that. Like that. Pick up a little other color. The blue. I'll throw some of that in there. Paints. A bit too dark. <laughs> Very dark. Soft edges. Brown's almost too dark there, but I'm going to come back and not too bad I guess it's pretty close hold down get some more water this area here we've got little shadow there under his neck. Stick a little brown in there just to help change it up. Clear water. has a dark snout here that's and a little bit of a mouth back here something like that
over here let's see on this side we got a little more brown get a little bit of got just a little bit of tone on his nose here something like that come on dark it stands out all right that's a bit too dark even yet all right let's put in a couple of eyes back here and see if we can get this guys those eyes are kind of like that I think I'm getting awfully close here, folks. His head is just a little bit too narrow on the left side there. I need to pull this out just a little. Oh, it's running in now, making it worse. Okay, pretty close. Pretty close. Whoops, I just lost my brush. I'm gonna pick up another one. <laughs> Threw it clear over there on the floor. <clears throat> All right, let's call this a finished job here. Oh, and we're not finished yet. We gotta put a little more. Um, got some textures and stuff we have to put in here. Just a few things to make it look like they're sort of standing on a, a cliff of some kind or a bank. I think they're on the bank. And there a few scumble in some things like that. At least it looks like they're standing on something. They're not just um, floating in the air. Don't want to float in the air. Okay, um, I think I want to, maybe I'll just soften a little bit of that off so I don't have quite so much hard edge here. I can use my brush here to okay I think folks are we doing on time man we're just about at the two hour mark amazing I'll put just a few little things in here to make it look like there's some something they could walk on if they wanted to get down here I think it's actually they're up in the clouds actually where you can't even see the the ground but I'm making this kind of like a lake or something and uh, that is going to do it I think
just a touch of gray there in some of these areas that are don't need so much white <clears throat> all right I keep saying I'm gonna stop I need somebody to tell me to stop <laughs> okay think folks I'm going to uh, stop and sign this thing and we will be <clears throat> finished for today get some more paint on there all right folks um, I think that's all I want to do for today I probably could do a few more things to this if I wanted to I may do a few after class is over but uh, I hope you like that I hope you give it a try and uh, I think I want to uh, ask you to uh, be sure to check out my website these will be these videos will be edited and put on my uh, website and the sketches and the value maps will be there and you can download those for your own use and uh, you're free to paint these there's no copyright infringement on my part um, check out my website I have uh, couple of things on there. I have a link to the Trekel uh, website if you want to buy some brushes, get 10% off. Um, I also have my calendars there. I actually have uh, put together some calendars again this year. These are like a little desk calendar. Um, I don't know if you like this kind of thing, but they're 10 bucks and uh, $2 to ship them to you. And uh, uh, you might like that. There's a link on my website for these. Uh, there's a flip over each day and they're, they're actually the paintings that we've painted all year so uh, I think there's only one painting on here one photo of a painting that we did last year but the rest of them are all 2017 paintings so uh, if you're interested in a little desk calendar uh, check that out on my website and uh, don't forget 10% off on Trekel uh, products except for paints um, and I think that's uh, about all of the advertisement and the commercialism I want to do today <laughs> hope you don't mind that I just like to uh, uh, see if I can bring up a few more things to you and uh, I really enjoy having you here I'm glad to have we had so many folks join us and uh, I think that's it for today uh, so until I see you again this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now bye bye <laughs>